Hello. Well, today I'm going to be talking about insomnia, the uh, third part of my Christopher Nolan little like series, I guess you could say. Um, still doing that. Uh, um, the I actually think that this film is a very underrated movie uh, by Christopher Nolan. Um, you know, it stars Al Pacino. Obviously, right there, and Robin Williams in Hillary Swank. Um, basically, uh, Al Pacino and his partner uh, from L.A. You know, L.A.P.D. They go to Alaska to, you know, uh, to help them out with a certain case, uh, and as they're there and things become, you know, they're trying to figure out what's all going on, who did this, and as to why they did this. Um, some things about Pacino's character uh, begin to really unfold, and uh, I mean, I, I'll probably talk about some spoilers, but uh, I don't know if you haven't seen this, but. What, what unfolds is quite interesting, so um, I'll kind of leave that as a surprise uh, to you guys who haven't uh, seen it, but if you have seen it, you already know what that is. But Yeah, Robin uh, Al Pacino, he plays the, the main, he's a veteran, he's an LAPD veteran detective um, with his partner over there. And again, it's in, it's in Alaska, and... Um, and it's during the months where there's like no uh, sundown. It's always sunny 24/7, basically. And um, yeah, uh, Hillary Swank plays a a cop. Uh, <clears throat> she's like an up and coming detective. Uh, in the film, and uh, she admires Al Pacino very much because he's a great detective. And um, Robin Williams is, um, uh, he's very dark in this. Um, this is one of his serious roles. Um, you know, spoiler alert, uh, he's the killer in this that they're looking for. Um, and he's also an author. And, um, what happened was this girl, who's a fan of his works, and she's interested in writing, and they're kind of like pen pals. They talk to each other, and she sent some of her own writings, and he would give feedback on what he thought about them. He thought she was very good, and would give her like notes and stuff. And basically, they became like, like you could say even, uh, you know, friends. They became fairly close in a way, even though it was mostly writing, um, at some point, you know, he sends gifts, uh, <clears throat> to her, uh, and he, you know, he, or, you know, when they meet, he, you know, he has feelings for her that, you know, granted, she's still in high school, so it's a bit, you know, a little, uh, be seen as fairly, uh, creepy. Uh, and, well, she's, you know, he's, um, you know, and he tells her about his feelings and how he feels about her, and I guess she, like, kind of just, like, she, like she just laughs, and then uh, it just... It didn't go over very well for him, and he, unfortunately, uh, he beat her to death. No, he didn't mean to do it. Just, um, flipped out. And, uh, the thing is, there's a, there's something about, there's something going on uh, with Pacino's character, is, and there's a reason he came out to Alaska, because there's some stuff going on 
that is very much, you know, uh, just some stuff in LA that's not very good, and uh, with him, so he's out here, out there in Alaska, trying to solve this case, and um, as he's doing so, uh, you know, uh, Robert Willis basically kind of seems to know about some of the things some stuff about him, like he shot his partner, for instance, in the fog. When they're, it seemed like they found the guy, so they're going and they're trying to, you know, um, apprehend him and um, gunfire, and some cops were shot, so you know, they're obviously going to try and now. If they can't apprehend him, well, they'll, you know, they'll kill him. Well, in the fog, and also, again, Pacino has insomnia, hence the name insomnia. You know, he can't sleep, which is makes it harder. Um, so, he, he's, he thinks he sees the guy in the fog, Robin Williams, but when he shoots, it's not the guy, it's the part, his partner, and yeah, very unfortunate affair, uh, and there's some, and from that, there's some stuff with Rob Williams and Pal Pacino, you know, like he knows he shot his partner, and you know, in a way, it's kind of like, you know, did he intend to do it, did he not? Um, yeah, but it's, a, it's very good, it's very interesting, it's very, it's a pretty different film, from no Ford Nolan, um, you know, it's a psychological thriller. Um, I guess one could say, uh, perhaps in a way, Memento is a psychological thriller, in that it's a well, it's a thriller. I think people can agree on, but maybe psychological in the sense that you don't know how reliable the narrator is. It goes back and forth. Where, you know, this film's pretty straightforward, honestly. Um, uh, this is the only Nolan film that he did not write, um, or at least in the sense of the creation of the film, because this is actually a remake. Um, this film is a remake, and uh, of a Norwegian film, I believe. Norwegian film, yeah. yeah. No one, yeah, he didn't direct, he didn't write this film, but uh, he did. At the, he did also write it in that sense. He wrote the final shooting draft of the script. Like uh, I read somewhere, he always does that. He always like finalizes the script to how he wants it to be as a director. That way he kind of has his, you know, fingerprints on it to a degree, but uh, he didn't write this from scratch or, you know, saw the Norwegian film and thought this would be a good movie for me to, you know, uh, remake and begin writing on, writing the film. Steven Soderbergh and George Clooney are executive producers on this. It's quite interesting. If you are, you know, and interested in that kind of thing, um, but yeah, uh, stellar performances by Pacino, Williams, and Swank. You know, I know I didn't mention a whole lot about Hillary Swank in that whole big description, but um, you know, uh, she's there. She admires Pacino, and yeah, she's, you know, I guess more willing to help him out around town, in that sense, than many other people, I guess, would be. So, yeah. I feel this is underrated in that, you know, the Dark Knight trilogy, Inception, and 
Bates, Interstellar, Dunkirk, and Memento all get all this acclaim and attention. Where following well, it's Nolan's first film, you can argue that doesn't get a whole lot of attention either. Uh, but um, this film, I feel, gets overlooked quite a bit. Um, same as Presti The Prestige, which I will be talking about uh, soon. Um, but yeah, this this film, uh, I don't know, um, just something about it, which you know, it's very Nolan esque, and yet at the same time, it's sort of not it's like it is his movie or it is his own vision but at the same time it doesn't exactly look like what you would expect from a Christopher Nolan film if that makes sense um, it's fairly different and um, it works um, actually this is a, one of those few movies where there's a commentary um, there's like there's like commentaries for like the first four films or so for no one and then after that there's like none don't know if that was done on purpose or by, by design but it's just interesting um, so if you're into commentaries uh, uh, Christopher Nolan has does commentary in order of shooting sequence so I don't know not sure exactly what the difference there is but I'm sure there is Uh, yeah, there's conversations with Nolan and Pacino. And it's this Blu-ray set's pretty cool. Um, I have this film on DVD as well, but I got that as a four-pack because it had three other movies. Um, a couple I um, I wanted one eh, one movie that's all right. I can't recall exactly what it is offhand. That was it. Yeah. Okay, but this I really wanted. A DVD. Like that was the first time I ever saw it. I mean, like it was like also a good deal. So I thought, hey, four movies for this price. When well, I think it was like it's between seven fifty and ten bucks for four movies. I thought that's a great deal. And this was pretty uh, inexpensive when I got it. I believe it was about ten dollars as well, um, between ten and fifteen. By the time I got this, but yeah, you can get this. You can get pretty much every Nolan film on. Obviously, you can get every Nolan film he's made, but still, uh, if you haven't seen this, it's it's worth a watch. It's not that too inexpensive on Blu-ray, and of course, if it's not that expensive on Blu-ray, it won't be that expensive on DVD. This was also his first film he made. That was released and presented by Warner Brothers. And from there, uh, he was able to make Batman Begins in the beginning of the Dark Knight trilogy. Because, well, Warner Brothers has DC and owns those, you know, those kind of characters. So, yeah, that's my thoughts on uh, Insomnia, basically. You know, gave a synopsis. But great performances, great... Again, I, I think it's fairly underrated, or one of his most underappreciated films. I mean, there are people who do appreciate it, but there's just something about this film, and even Prestige, that just doesn't get as much attention as the others. Obviously, you know, the Dark Knight trilogy is going to have a whole lot of people focused on those films, because it's Batman, and Batman has always been fairly popular. Uh, but yeah... Um, if you like it, what do you think? Do you enjoy it? Uh, is this one of your favorite Nolan films? Um, I don't know where I'd rank this as my on the scale of my favorite. Obviously, I said that Dark Knight trilogy is my favorite. All, all those movies are my favorite for Nolan, but I don't know. If I did rank this like a lower, like like amongst the say my least favorite. Uh, that's still pretty good because all of Nolan's movies, in my opinion, are are excellent. They're great. They're good. Uh, words like that, I feel, are really good to describe Nolan. 
Nolan's filmography. Obviously, I'm fairly biased in that I enjoy his works, but still. There's some who don't, and that's all fine. Um, some think he's a bit pretentious in the storytelling, or how he makes a lot of things fairly complex, and perhaps they don't need to be. I don't know, the way his mind works and how he tells stories in his films, it's always interesting and fascinating to me. Um, I always look forward to anything he makes when I hear he's making a new movie. Um, so, yeah. Uh, that's really all I gotta say uh, about this film. Uh, next time I will be talking about The Prestige. And not Batman Begins, because, well, I'm going to revisit the Dark Knight trilogy at the very end of all of this. Like, those will be, like, the last three videos in this series in this that I'm making. Uh, because, you know, I think, you know, those are my favorite out of all of the films he's made. So, why not just save, in my opinion, the best for last? Also... I can just do those in order instead of every other movie from Batman Begins until then, which will have prestige and inception between. I can just get run through all of them again. And uh, those will be probably like retrospectives. Um, same with Dunkirk, because I've talked about those four films a lot. So, yeah. Um, that is, again, that is all I have to say. I know I said that earlier, but this really is it for me. Uh, I am I have nothing else really to say at the moment. Um, so if you enjoy this film, if you want to say what you like about it, cool. If you don't enjoy it a whole lot, say why. Or if you're in between, that's fine. But yeah, uh, again, that's all I gotta say. I uh, hope you all have a good day, have a good week, and I will uh, see you next time. Bye.